Okay, this is a joint talk. My silent partner is back there on the camera I'm filming this, and that is my wife. Uh, it is her business that gives us the opportunity to learn from dogs. We have been running a KG dog boarding facility for a while. Here's some of our guests. And you might wonder what I'm going to be talking about when I say I'm talking about dog communication. That's not it. It's a whole lot more than just woof woof. Okay, who are we? I mean, you probably know by now who I am, but I'll just go through these points. I am an ex-research scientist. I am now retired. My wife is an ex-business analyst. She has retired from that profession and is now running the cage free dog boarding facility. We have such a high throughput of, of dogs coming through our facility that we've now amassed more than 80 years experience of handling a dog. We are cage free, which essentially means we live with dogs. I'm not kidding about live with dogs. We have a pack, an ever-changing pack, because we have new dogs coming in, and dogs leaving. And that pack itself is a self-training tool. Once we have instilled instructions into the pack, believe it or not, it is the pack then that teaches the newcomers the procedures in our facility, which is called Area K9. I said we live with dogs. I wasn't kidding. Sherman and Higgins, two English bulldogs there. There are our dogs. This is Abel and that is Kane. They are Shetland sheep dogs. They are from the same litter. But they're very, very different in their personalities, of course. And you see other dogs there too. How do we know that this might actually be true? This experiment really supports the theory that I just gave you. This is the Siberian silver fox experiment that was begun in the Soviet Union in the late 50s. And here is a picture from the early days of the originator of the experiment. There are the silver foxes. This is a large silver fox. And the purpose of this experiment was to do selective breeding on the Siberian fox for a single trait, a trait of tameness. So what I mean by tameness then is animals that would be selected for the next breeding cycle are those that the handler could approach, could even touch. Animals that would shy away from the handler were not selected for the breeding process. So they were really just trying to select one trait for the Siberian silver fox. And what happened as these generations continued to be, to be formed is other things started to change in the dogs. Sorry, foxes. They became a little dog-like. You see the color change here in this fox, and also here the color change in this fox. The ear structure also changed. They actually came a little bit more dog-like. Now you can buy one of these. They are available for sale. This is Tristan. Tristan is a catahoula. Tristan is asleep. This is in our facility. What you can see from this picture is this is a supremely confident dog. He is asleep. He has exposed his underbelly, which is the most uh, sensitive area of a dog, easy to attack, easy to damage. No dog in their right mind would do this if they didn't have anything but a lot of self-confidence. How do we know that that is exactly what is going on with Tristan being asleep in this position? You may ask. This is how. There are other dogs around him, and none of them will touch him. They will only touch him by invitation. This is an example of a very assertive animal that is high up in the hierarchy of the pack. It does not necessarily mean that he gets everything he wants, because there may be somebody else that's a little bit more assertive than him. And it also means that he won't necessarily take away everything from another dog, because he may not, he may not want it. But nonetheless, he's, he's at the top. Incidentally, this is another Catahoula mix, so these two dogs actually look very similar, but the behavior between these two is chalk and cheese. The one I'm on your left is a very shy dog. Here's some tongue-in-cheek dog rules, and there's a couple of pictures here that I, I took from our website. Anyway, let me just go through the rules. If I like it, it's mine. If it's in my mouth, it's mine. If I can take it from you, it's mine. Here we have an example of a river pulling a branch off a tree, 
I can't remember that dog's name, but that dog clearly would like to do what Griffin is doing, but doesn't. Down here, we have Murphy and Ryder. They have a branch in their mouths. Murphy had it, Ryder decided he wanted it, and what do you say to a great day that wants something? Yes, sir. And he ended up with the branch. The border collie there, RJ, is policing the exchange. Here's some more rules. If I saw it first, it's mine. If you're playing with something and you put it down, it automatically becomes mine. That is so true. I've seen that happen. But I love this last rule. If it's broken, it's yours. <laughs> now, there is one breed that does not seem to exhibit fear. And it is shown in this photograph. And this actually is a guest of the Area K9. It is not the particular guest that I have in mind because we have banned a Yorkshire Terrier because Yorkshire Terriers seem to have a different emotion. They seem to have death wish. <laughs> I said I'd talk to you about correcting a dog. You've got to act very, very quickly if you want to access the short-term memory. The short-term memory on a dog is a matter of seconds. You really need to get there within a half a second if you want to correct the behavior with a real strong input. If you leave it more than about three seconds, it's completely gone. The association between what just happened and what you were trying to correct. Dogs live in the now. They basically think about what they're looking at, hearing, and smelling in the moment. This is not to say they have bad memories. They have extremely good long-term memories. Those of you that may have pets and you've left them somewhere, and you go home to meet your dog, they know exactly who you are. And you will get a wonderful greeting. In the short-term memory, when you want to try and correct a behavior, you've got to do it very, very quickly. That's right. This cartoon really exemplifies what dogs actually hear when you speak to them. Not quite true, a little bit of a simplifies simplification. But anyway, in the bottom, the man is speaking to Ginger, and it's blah, blah, Ginger, blah, 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 Ginger, blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much what they hear. Not quite true, I'll, I'll tell you where that's wrong. So now this is what you really want to know, is how dogs speak to each other. Well, they're continually sending out signals. This is Jersey. Jersey is a chocolate lab Doberman that comes to visit us quite frequently. And all of these signals that are going out that other dogs see, pretty much in this frequency, mean something. So if you want to try and understand your dog, you should start training yourself to see these signals. And I suggest you just work on one at a time. This is Patch. Patch has just arrived. Patch looks like a yellow lab. Patch has nothing to do with a yellow lab. It's a strange mix. Of course, Patch gets Patch's name from the Patch on his head. You see his hair is up all the way. All the way. The tail is upright, absolutely upright. Patch has just arrived, and he's going through the usual scrum that all dogs go through when they arrive at our facility. There is a difference when a dog arrives at our facility to when a dog arrives at a dog park. When a dog is in a dog park, that is neutral territory. At our facility, if they've been there for more than a few hours, a day for sure, they've all got ownership. Patch is an intruder until he's accepted into the pack, which in his case is going to take about 10 seconds because he knows the deal. But I'm just having a sniff down here of his golden retriever a very unusual golden retriever, Bentley, he's an extremely assertive dog and generally is at the top of the pack. And this Max is there. It's another story. Ears. Well, if they're up and forward, that's alert and interested. If they're very forward, that could be a sign of a challenge. And if they're pulled flat back on the head, then that's a clear signal of fear, but it's also a signal of respect. When we go home and our two shut and shoot dogs greet us, their tails will be wagging madly. The back end of the dog will be going from side to side. They will be making vocalizations and their ears will be flat back against their head. They're not scared of us, they're just showing respect. Yeah. I said I'd talk about uh, dogs speaking to each other. They, they do have dialects. Not all dogs can speak to each other. And this actually can lead to problems. So this little diagram shows you uh, those dogs that are more puppy-like in their communications, leading down to those dogs that are more other in their communications. So 
So a Cavalier King Charles, for example, does not have the full range of dog communication tools available to it. Similarly, it doesn't understand them also. So if a King Charles is having a little bit of a problem with the Siberian Husky, they're not talking the same language to each other. And depending on what the situation is, that may not come out well. So all dogs are not equal here. Displacement, this is a behavior that occurs when the dog is stressed and you, you see strange things happening. The one that we see most often is shaking, this one here. Uh, if there's a quick altercation, uh, very quickly you see one of them shaking. Um, they'll go off, they'll pretend they're doing something else. We see the king, we see some of these other signals that go up here, the displacement behavior. If they're fearful, you'll see, you'll see these behaviors. We often see the drooling when a dog is coming in for an interview because it's a very stressful situation being introduced into the pack. And that is a very clear signal that your dog is stressed. And then there are some other ones that I've got there on the slide. This is Dr. Ian Dunbar here. And this is probably one of the best training books I have seen. It is only about 150 pages readily available on the internet or from him directly. And on our website, on the Area Cane website, we have two books from him uh, in PDF format. Before you get your puppy, what to look out for, and after you get your puppy, some early training techniques. They're available for download on areacanine.com. Totally free. Please take one, give it to someone that you know that is getting a puppy or has just got a dog. There's lots of great information both of these, and uh, they were given to me by Dr. As much as we can get this information out to people, I urge you to spread the word as well. So that does bring me to the end of dog communications. And if you want to talk to us about dog communications or behavioral issues, we're on the ship for a couple more days. And I will go outside of this theatre immediately following this and we'll be there if you want to talk to us. If you see us around the ship, please don't hesitate to come up and talk to us. Whatever we're doing, we would be happy to talk dogs at any time. And the website for Area Canine is shown on this slide, and that's where that downloadable material is to 